our first interview in San Francisco with Steve Webb from Reader Rights. Welcome. Thank you. Great. Uh, for, uh, thank you for having us. Yeah, um, yeah. Thanks for including me. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, can you share some more information about Reader Rights? Uh, what is Reader Rights? Yeah, so Reader Rights is a peer to peer car rental marketplace. So, what we do is we enable people uh, who don't have cars to rent them from people who have cars but aren't using them. And the people who aren't using the cars that they own can make $250 a month renting out these cars to people who need them um, you know, to travel for a weekend or for a week-long trip or a month-long road trip. And, and how many members do you get? Uh, we have tens of thousands of members in the United States, um, thousands of people renting their cars in over 2,500 cities in the U.S. and tens of thousands of people that are renting the cars. Cool. And can you, can you tell me some of more information about how uh, uh, the concept and the idea from the startup phase of, really, of Relay Rides? Yeah, so Relay Rides, our founder actually started Relay Rides in 2008 when he was a uh, graduate student at Harvard Business School. And he saw this problem of you know, over 300 million cars in the United States and only 200 million registered drivers. So there's this, you know, surplus of over 100 million cars that were sitting idle. And what he wanted to do was better utilize these vehicles and enable people to you know, make money and turn these idle assets into a source of income. And so in 2008, the idea came up with it and took him a couple years to get the insurance product right and to get everything right with the company. And then we launched for the first time in 2010 in Boston and then shortly after that in San Francisco. And what were the main challenges? You, also, you already mentioned the insurance. Yeah, right. And that was one of the main challenges. Obviously, um, in the transportation industry, you want to make safety, trust and safety a key priority. And so that was top of mind when Relay Rides was first started. Shelby, our founder, wanted to make sure that drivers who were renting their cars and people who were renting out those cars were all safe. So he really pioneered uh, first of its kind insurance product for peer-to-peer -peer car sharing to make it work. And we would say that that's the foundation for our trust and safety. And that was one of the first th steps that we had to take to ensure that the peer-to-peer -peer marketplace model would work for uh, car rentals. Yeah, and, 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 and uh, how did he manage to make a deal with an insurance company? Uh, it took a little bit of time uh, and we worked with an excellent broker. And um, yeah, it was just a matter of finding the right insurance company uh, and finding the right people to um, you know, create this innovative product. And it was the first confrontation with the existing economy, existing world, uh, by building a, 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 a new marketplace. Uh, how did the, the existing other uh, car rental companies respond at uh, uh, the, the platform? So we, at the time, felt that you know, a lot of our, what we were offering was very complementary to um, you know, existing car rental um, marketplace or existing car rental companies. Um, you know, traditional car rental companies, even to this day, have their own specific niche where we feel that perhaps um, folks are better served um, by using them. Um, for example, if they're pressed for time and need a car urgently. Um, Relay Rides minimum rental is one day. So Relay Rides really is in a unique space where we're a car rental marketplace that's designed primarily for people that are you know, traveling and are planning their trips in advance and are going to be traveling for you know, a day, a week, a month, or even longer. So it's not really a, a, a last minute option. So when you think, okay, I need a car in an hour, then it's, 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 it's not the best option to choose. Yeah, I, when we first started, that was one of the things that we were trying to do is create this opportunity for people to um, have access to instant mobility. And um, what we found is that for the peer-to-peer -peer model, uh, the most uh, useful uh, case for peer-to-peer -peer car rentals was for longer duration. It required less capital investment, and for our owners as well, um, for the car rentals themselves, they would have to you know, prepare the car in advance, make sure that it was clean and so forth, coordinate the rental, and it was just, it made more sense for them to rent it out for longer periods of time rather than just for an hour or two if they're gonna put in this work. So over the years, we've evolved away from you know, any short duration rentals towards long duration rentals, and it's really caused our company to grow quite a bit. And what's the average uh, length of rental? So the average length of rental, I believe, now is three to five days. Okay, cool. And uh, it varies depending on the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can imagine. 
And, and, and what way did you manage to, to, to make the right balance between the demand and the supply, especially also in the first years of the, of the platform? Yeah, so in the beginning, the main focus, and it remained a main focus for uh, many years, was working on the supply side and working on you know, attracting folks who were renting out their cars. At this point, we're looking for you know, more of a balance between attracting the supply and the demand. And we're you know, getting close to achieving that network effect um, where you know, supply and demand are kind of neck and neck and you know, building each other. Okay, and, and how did you grow the company? Uh, I also read about some, some investments. Uh... Yeah, yeah, so that's very critical for most startups and Relay Rides is no exception. We uh, started actually in Cambridge, as I mentioned, Shelby Clark, our founder, was an MBA student at Harvard Business School in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And that's where he came up with the idea and that's where we first launched. Uh, but shortly after launching in Cambridge, we came to San Francisco, California, because um, most of our investors are here. Actually, all of our investors of our Series A are based in San Francisco. And so we um, acquired capital from uh, Google Ventures, uh, Shasta, and uh, August Capital and other um, other very reputable uh, investment uh, VCs, and um, we utilize that capital to grow the business. Um, it's really kind of uh, helped uh, kickstart Relay Rides, so to speak. Yeah, I can imagine. And what did you got to, uh, more besides the money from the investors? I, I can imagine that Google Ventures is, is also uh, on more fields a really interesting investor. Yeah, so uh, you know Google Ventures has been really great about providing us not only with the capital investment but also insights into growing and hiring and you know other aspects of the business we were also at our very beginning stages part of an incubator called mass challenge which is um, massachusetts challenge that's what it stands for and they help a lot of startups similar to relay rides that are based in the massachusetts area we were based there when we launched um, you know have the resources at the beginning to start so we had um, access to other entrepreneurs who were maybe a little further along in the growth and development of their company. We learned from them. Um, we had access to, um, you know, facilities and um, from, you know, folks that were providing know-how. So, you know, it, it, I think a lot of people think about, you know, the investment side as simply capital. But, um, you know, we've gained a lot of leadership through our investors. One of our more recent that investors is Canaan Partners. They led our Series B round. And um, from Kanan, the person who led that round, Deepak, um, uh, he's one of our investors. He sits on our board now. He has a lot of experience taking uh, with travel companies, with hospitality companies, and taking these fledgling companies to the IPO stage. Um, so you know, we're really excited about that type of leadership. We're very discerning about the type of folks that invest because we're not just looking for money. We're looking for um, leadership and insights from our investors as well. Yeah, and um, how do how do we manage to keep the right balance between uh, the the, uh, the the profit making profits and also uh, keeping the investors happy also on long term and building a sustainable model for the future? Because I, I see lots of collaborative economy organizations they're growing really fast. And I think one of the biggest challenges in growing really fast is 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 uh, is, is also growing a, a healthy company for the future. Yeah. At, at, at what way do we keep that in mind? Yeah, I think that the third point, the third leg in, in our, at least with our investors, um, basically satisfies the first two that you brought up. Our investors are happy if we're growing a sustainable business. So um, obviously growth, um, rapid growth and expansion is very important at Relay Rides, um, but we're very mindful of things like margins and, and so forth with um, you know, our investors. And I think that they have a very balanced view of how we should be growing. And uh, again, going back to um, Deepak, who is one of our investors, he actually um, has brought, as I mentioned, a lot of companies to you know, that IPO stage where they're ready to um, you know, go public and become a public company. And the way that he's been able to do that with companies like Lending Club, which just IPO'd very recently, is by you know, helping them grow in the right way, um, help them grow in a sustainable way that's going to um, enable the company to be healthy, not just in the short term, but in years to come. And, and why is an IPO so important? Uh, I think it's also a difference in, 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 with the Netherlands. Uh, they're not really talking much about this, but I, I, I heard a lot in the, in, in the media in, in the US. Uh, why is this IPO so important? 
Yeah, so, it, it, and that's not necessarily the only, you know, the end goal of, of our company. Um, you know, of course, we're, we're looking to grow a very successful business. And in many cases, the, the success is measured by becoming a publicly traded company. Um, after you've exhausted certain investment opportunities, going public means the access to additional capital, the, the ability to grow even more rapidly. Um, so, you know, we're not, I'm not necessarily saying that that is the only kind of um, means of success as a startup company, but uh, a lot of the most successful startups um, actually, you know, in order to continue to grow and thrive, um, offer the public uh, the opportunity to invest in the company. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, when you look at the existing competition uh, or, or, the, or the existing uh, market, mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning when you start uh, uh, really right, they think, okay, it's, it's, it's nice, it's a small company, they, 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 they don't see it as a threat. Um, does this change when you start growing uh, and also with your ambitions for the future? Yeah, you know, looking at our competition, we're looking at companies that may view us as competitors. Um, I think that it's, there's no denying the fact that as Relay Rides um, grows, that they view us very differently. Um, but as I mentioned as well, you know, our business isn't really, uh, it's very unique, in fact, to other businesses that are in you know, the car rental industry. There are other peer-to-peer -peer players that are focused on one particular segment of the car rental industry, and then there are big you know, established players, uh, traditional rental car companies that are a lot bigger than Relay Rides, but also, again, very unique in what they offer. So, you know, we feel that as we grow, the issue isn't going to necessarily be as much competitors um, that we're going to be, you know, viewing as obstacles, but um, ongoing education of the public to this new innovative model, um, you know, educating people about trust and safety, how our business works, enticing people to you know, utilize these underutilized assets uh, is going to be a bigger challenge for us, we feel, in the future. Yeah, and um, when you started in a uh, uh, first launch platform in 2010, um, the declarative economy was quite, quite young and, and, and not really well known. Uh, now, uh, when you read the newspaper, it's, 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 it's all over there. Yeah. Uh, at what way do you profit, uh, or maybe not profit, from this, this really enormous amounts of attention uh, for the collaborative economy? Well, as you mentioned, Relay Rides was one of the pioneers in the sharing economy or the collaborative economy, as it's also called. And we're very proud of that. We are the very first peer-to-peer -peer car rental marketplace or car sharing marketplace, as it's also called. And we're proud of our position in pioneering this. We're happy to see how much awareness has grown and how much that profits us to, you know, grow alongside these other sharing economy companies and benefit from you know the footprint that companies like Airbnb have. Um, but again, we view ourselves as a very unique company. So you know, while it's good for you know, the public to learn more, and more about the sharing econ uh, economy and about the collaborative economy, it's still our responsibility to educate potential Relay Rides members to the benefits of peer-to-peer -peer car rentals. So on one end, it's very exciting um, to be part of this entire movement, but on the other end, the challenge still remains educating the general population in the United States and abroad about the benefits of car sharing. And you now have a really uh, a big com uh, uh, community. At, at what way do you keep contact with community and, and, and at what way do you get, uh, keep them attracted with the brand of uh, Relay Rides? Yeah, so I actually am the, the um, head of community here at Relay Rides and we take it very, very seriously. Uh, our CEO and COO and other folks within our team are former eBay um, employees. And so, you know, a lot of people will view eBay as the, you know, granddaddy of uh, the sharing or collaborative economy. And, um, you know, from those eBay experiences that a lot of our leadership team had, one of the key takeaways was that, you know, the majority of innovations that come uh, from economies like the Relay Rides or eBay come from our members and come from our community. So for us, community is the lifeblood of Relay Rides and we take our community very seriously. So you know, my number one focus as the community manager, community director, is uh, to you know, make sure that we're creating a means to engage with our community 
and gain their feedback on what they love about relay rides and what they would like improved about relay rides. And we do this by regularly meeting with our community and engaging with them at live events and online member events and um, through social media and continually you know, using their feedback as a barometer for our success mm -hmm. and as a means to um, continue to innovate and change the company uh, to benefit them. And do you also know uh, what factors play a role if, uh, when people get, uh, become an ambassador of Relay Rides? So, so uh, what are their, 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 the drivers the, uh, for, for their passion to, to, to start helping you, to start giving you ideas uh, about your, 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 your organization? Yeah, so on Relay Rides, it's, you know, there are two different groups of people that comprise our member base or our community base. And sometimes they overlap, but um, it's owners, people that are renting out their cars and renters, the people that are renting the cars that are provided by the owners. And you know, for them, there are two interests, obviously. For the owner, you know, becoming an evangelist of relay rides, uh, there are certain incentives. Uh, but also, you know, one of the reasons why they're continually engaging with us and providing feedback is because of how much our marketplace benefits them. The average owner on relay rides is making $250 a month. Um, that's the average active owner, but many other folks are making you know, more than that, you know, upwards of $1,000 a month. So for them, you know, this is ability to um, you know, create extra revenue off of an idle asset. And so from, from them, from their vantage point, you know, it's just really taking care of their investment by informing us of what they like and what they don't like. For renters, on the other hand, um, it's just a matter of them you know, uh, appreciating what the brand provides for them. If you've taken you know, this kind of commoditized rental experience and compared it to Relay Rides, what you would see is that we provide a community, we, we provide this opportunity for these renters to feel like they're helping a neighbor. Um, we provide this opportunity for them to get a car that they typically wouldn't get at a traditional rental car company. Because we're peer to peer, there are over 800 makes and models available at Relay Rides, which you're not gonna get at a traditional rental car company. And the value of relay rides is so much better. You know, the average rental on relay rides is 35% less. So for our renters, their vested interest is, you know, making sure that we continue to thrive and grow because we're their preferred choice. And for owners, it's a means for them to, you know, offset the costs of vehicle ownership. So, you know, for our evangelists and for folks that are providing us feedback, they have, you know, these vested interests to look after. And I guess the uh, other companies, they are, they are really jealous about having such a, a, a really loyal and, and good fan base. But in the end, it's, it's all about uh, uh, the, value, the value that you add for your customers. Yeah, um, exactly. And I, I feel that that's, you know, people aren't engaging with brands unless they're getting value from it. And we're very uh, satisfied with the fact that we're providing a lot of value for our members, a lot of value. And... Um, that's what keeps our community engaged with us. And, and in what other way uh, uh, do you re uh, uh, manage to, to, to maintain the DNA of Relay Rides uh, while growing? Yeah, so it's, there's a, as we grow and evolve, um, obviously the company's changed quite a bit. Um, we, again, started off as focused on short duration rentals. Now we're focused on long duration rentals and travelers. So... Uh, you know, our DNA at our core, I'd say the main focus has not changed, which is providing people um, with an opportunity to utilize, underutilize assets and to change mobility. And so that has remained a constant. And if that changes, well, then we're, you know, we're not, we're not benefiting our members. So I think in order to continue to grow and, and flourish, we have to keep that core um, kind of DNA. And how do you do it in, 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 in daily practice, uh, like uh, with uh, uh, getting new people on board? Uh, at what way, way do you really focus on, on, on keeping this day in the DNA? Yeah, I think that it's inherent. I, I think that there's, um, you know, what we're offering members is, you know, the, our, our community will, um, obviously they provide us with feedback um, to modify the product, but at our core, we're a car rental company. So um, we're not going to, diverge away from that too much. And that's how we do it. Yeah, and uh, you also had in the beginning a, a, a cooperation with, with General Motors in, in, in mm -hmm. which year was that? In 
Uh, yeah, so in 2000 and 2011, we partnered with General Motors. Well, actually, they invested in the company. And um, this was, again, when we were very much focused on short duration uh, mobility solutions. So we were focused on really emulating Zipcar. And we don't do that at all anymore. But at the time, uh, GM was really focused on um, partnering with Relay Rides uh, for short duration mobility. And um, they were going to, uh, what we did was we became the first company to integrate with their API for their OnStar um, telematic system. And it was a great opportunity to uh, you know, work with an established player, but we pivoted away from that short duration uh, car rental experience. And so the partnership really wasn't working beyond um, 2012 when we launched Nationwide and began to focus on longer duration rentals. Yeah. Well, I think it's interesting uh, uh, when you look at lots of uh, crowd companies, uh, they're, they are really attracting their, their, their members with about everything that they do. But when you look at the funding part, that there are not really much collaborative economy organizations uh, that use crowdfunding also to get a part of their, their funding for their organization. Mm -hmm. or, do you know why, why that could be? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, I think that as Relay Rides and Airbnb and obviously eBay uh, launched, they're, you know, these, these kind of uh, companies, especially Relay Rides, Airbnb, they grew at the same time that some of the very first crowdfunding companies were starting. Um, so, you know, there wasn't that opportunity available. Um, also, you know, back to, you know, when Relay Rides was looking for financing and as we continue to look for investors, um, you know, the crowdfunding opportunity is, it's very, uh, it's, it's great, but it doesn't really work with, you know, what we're looking to do, which is not only just find an investor, find capital to grow the business, but also find leadership and find an investor that can provide us with insights and provide us with more than just capital. Um, as Relay Rides raised our Series B uh, in the summer of 2014, we had many investors that were interested in um, you know, investing in the company, but we were very discerning about who we brought on um, to act as an investor and become a board member um, because we were very interested in making sure that the person was the right fit for our business model. So, you know, with crowdfunding, I think that there, you know, there's certain advantages, um, but then you're missing out on that opportunity to gain leadership. Yeah, yeah. Or you make a combination of crowdfunding and and, and, the, yeah. and the VC. Uh, yeah, interesting. And um, <clears throat> and what way do you uh, 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 when you look in in the in the in the process of of of, of, of renting a car? Uh, and what way do you keep the security uh, uh, safe that people know that, that their car will be brought back and that's the driver mm. who uh, uh, and but also that people are renting a a good working car yeah so uh, as i mentioned a little earlier in our discussion really rides has made insurance the foundation of our trust and safety and from the very beginning when our founder shelby clark thought of the concept of really rides in 2008 uh, trust and safety was at the forefront. And so we're very proud of the fact that we offer $1 million liability to owners and renters as the foundation of our trust and safety. Uh, but in addition to that, we offer various other measures to protect our members, one of which is we screen all the drivers that are active in Relay, on Relay Rides' marketplace as drivers. Um, so you know anyone that's approved to rent on Relay Rides, we've checked their driving background to make sure that they're safe drivers, that they haven't had major driving violations. In addition to that, we have various fraud protection measures that are in place that are proprietary that function to make sure that the people who are renting cars are who they say they are. And we have a two-way rating system to make sure that our owners and renters um, provide each other with feedback and to weed out people that um, you know, aren't the best actors in the marketplace. So our trust and safety, obviously, as a transportation company, is of the utmost importance. And we've kind of built the company around it, you could say. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, you say really clear, OK, we're a transportation company or we are, or we are, we are a car renting companies. And 
you're operating in the collaborative economy, but in the core, you're of course you're, you're a car renting company. I think it's really interesting and also really good, uh, uh, clear uh, uh, by uh, sharing that, uh, because I see quite some other organizations, they're really too, too, focusing too many uh, on, okay, we're in the sharing economy, but, that's, but they're not focusing on, on what, they are, are, what, what, what they really are. So I think it's yeah, really interesting. Yeah, I think you know, it's important to make the distinction that you know, we are a peer-to-peer -peer car rental company, so we are very different. There's a major distinction between us and a traditional car rental company, just as there's a major distinction between Airbnb and traditional hotels, or traditional um, lodging and accommodations. So um, I think it is very important to still draw the distinction between you know, the marketplace and you know, the area that our marketplace is providing um, opportunities in. Yeah. And what is your growth strategy? Because I also read you also uh, uh, bought a, a, a competitor or a, another company a couple of years ago. So, so what's your strategy in, in, in growing now and also in the future? Yeah, so um, we acquired a company called Wheels, a peer-to-peer -peer car rental marketplace in 2012. And um, actually 2013. And peer, or Wheels was... Uh, very uh, advantageous to us because of the technology that they had, the personnel that they had. Um, the, one of the founders of Wheels actually came on board Relay Rides and helped us launch our airports offering. So uh, Wheels was just a really great opportunity to gain some insights, gain some personnel, and um, you know acquire a, a certain amount of members. However, I, I wouldn't say that it was necessarily, uh, you know, obviously we want to continue to grow and personnel matter and you know, insights matter, but um, we weren't acquiring them because of their marketplace or that they had built uh, a user base um, because only a few members actually came from Wheels. Um, we were more focused on you know, acquiring talent and acquiring insights. Yeah. And what are your, 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 uh, your plans for the future with, uh, with, with uh, Relay Rides? Are you also getting out, uh, outside of the U.S.? Or? Yeah, absolutely. So as I mentioned, Relay Rides raised uh, $35 million in our Series B round. And what we're going to use that money for primarily is continuing to acquire members, continuing to improve our product, uh, grow outside the United States, and grow within the United States by offering uh, more um, investment in things like airport, uh, different products, uh, and different innovations, and uh, continuing to improve the marketplace for our, our existing members. And can you also share some, some more information about the new products or innovations you're going to introduce or that you have introduced lately? Yeah, so one of the major ones has been uh, continuing to double down on airports. And as I mentioned before, you know, we have this eBay DNA and a lot of our uh, executive staff, including our CEO, Andre Haddad, uh, you know, apply this principle that the biggest innovations come from our members. And so when we launched Nationwide in 2012, one of our members, uh, Edward Salwin, in fact, was his name, in Washington, D.C., began renting his car at the airport. And that was something that we didn't ever think to do. So since that point, when we found out that Edward wanted us to help you know, facilitate better ease of use at airports, we've been doubling down on that. And that's one of the product developments that I point to. Since 2012, we've continued to build the ability for owners and renters to uh, facilitate transactions at airports, either by creating uh, airport parking lots at places like LAX and SFO, or by just enabling people to list their cars um, for pickup and drop off. So that's one of the areas where we see a huge opportunity. If we look at the traditional car rental, mar uh, car rental industry, you know, it's a $57 billion industry, and half of that revenue comes from airports. So we see that as another means for us to grow the business, as one example. And, and, and um, what are your biggest challenges for the future in, in building up a sustainable organization? Yeah, so in order to build a sustainable organization, one of the main challenges, again, for something as innovative and novel as Relay Rides is to continue to educate and continue to build awareness for this really novel concept to encourage people to recoup the, um, the expenses of owning a car. Uh, the average vehicle sits idle 92% of the time. 
a lot of people are somewhat aware of the fact that they're underutilizing a vehicle, but a lot of people don't realize just how much a vehicle is underutilized. So what we need to do is continue to inform people that this vehicle that's underutilized and rapidly depreciating can actually be an investment that gives you, uh, can either pay for itself or give you an actual return. So, you know, as we look to the future, one of the main challenges is continuing to, you know, build awareness for our uh, business model and build awareness that, um, that this is a business model that can really improve um, people's livelihoods. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.